out an interview um, and I'll have someone in the comments saying, really great interview. I love how you let your guests speak. And then you'll have someone below that comment saying, you need to chime in and interrupt more and do the, exactly the opposite. So you will always get both sides of the art. You cannot win with, you know, you, you please someone, someone else hates it. And it's always yep. that back and forth. And I've just I learned to live with that. You know, it's just the way it is. And I, 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 people, people say, you know, you need to do this. You need to do that. Look, I'm just a dude who put himself on YouTube to interview some people. I'm not a professional. I don't claim to be. I'm just putting my conversations out there. Uh, you know, I'm not professional. But you know I what? I make it look good, but you know, I'm just a dude. <laughs> but you know what? We so. put ourselves out there to be judged. Yeah, right? and that's understandable. We, we, we have the gall to go out there and put ourselves out there to be judged. So, you know, to any keyboard warrior out there, I hate to, like, say this, but put yourself out there and then let's have a conversation, right? Yeah. Because it's, I... <laughs> you know, it's much, much easier said than done. Like, the, the microphone that, that, that Vinny's using, by the way, you know how much money that microphone costs? It's it's a lot of money. <laughs> uh, put it that way. Um, I have a sure. It's a sure, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm using the Rodea uh, Ro road mic because they sent me the Streamer X box and the microphone okay. and the holder together as like a yeah. as like a try it out. But my sure is my baby uh, because it's just the greatest microphone. I I think it's the best microphone out there. But um, ro this one puts up a fight and the, the they get a they get a great setup so um i highly recommend anyone who's a content creator uh look into to road because they got some great stuff especially for like if you're making documentaries wireless microphones they have a great great setup for all that stuff um but uh i want to finish uh off our conversation with ufos because that's kind of what we're here for um you've you've interviewed like the creme de la creme in 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 my eyes of of UFO researchers, um, which which few interviews have stuck out the most to you? Oh, that's a good question. You know what? I should be better at answering this question because I get asked it all the time, but I always seem to forget to, to really think deep about it. Look, I started off in twenty twenty one a, a very fresh, just threw myself out there. I was lucky enough to uh, become friends with Lou Elizondo early on uh, and interview Lou. Uh, and I look back at those interviews with fond memories. Um, so they stand out and they always will. But I think some of the better interviews have been with uh, Diana Pasolka. I've had, I've interviewed Diana twice and they're always, I always come away with a new train of thought, the way that she does this whole religion technology and combines it all into the ufo subject i find fascinating and they i always come away feeling good from those kind of interviews as well but one thing i'll always say as well is i'll i'll prepare for an interview and do an interview that i expected to not get much from and they'll be the ones that i sometimes get the most from it's that's it's, it's a strange thing it actually really is and you know what i've 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 had that same exact feeling and mm. you know the two people you mentioned diana and lou i mean they're they're on the top 10 list for me um you know i've had a lot of my you know uh bucket list people but you know there are people that that i really want to have on uh like danny sheehan like lou elizondo like yeah. diana pasoka um and you know eventually um i know the show will get to that point um uh, and, and and I really look forward to it. But like you said, um, those three people, what they're doing for the topic, the credibility that they lend to it, especially you know, uh, especially especially people like Elizondo and um, uh, Diana, um, and I, actually all three, um, because of just their their credibility as people bringing to the table what they are um it's it's just amazing and we are in the the golden age of ufology as as far as i'm concerned 
Yeah, absolutely, man. And I, I, I enjoy it. That's the thing as well. I enjoy speaking to these people. And I, you know, I have the interviews that like, are like an hour long interview on my channel. But the conversations that I form with these people outside of that are amazing as well. You know, I think this is right. the thing, you know, I get I get I lucky enough to be friends with quite a few people I've interviewed now. And, you know, there's always to say that there are individuals who I've I've had on my show military witnesses who have come forward pilots who have come forward they're some of the most important conversations i've had as well to be able to platform these people who have seen things who want to get their voice heard and you know i love that i love being able to do that it's it's really it's really good what do you think the chances are that civilian research beats the government to the punch on disclosure i know it sounds weird but do you think there's a possibility that civilian research and that this whole side of it could actually beat the government to some sort of disclosure, like proving it beyond a shadow of a doubt? Yeah, I think there is every chance that that could happen. Like we said right at the start of the show, when you know we're always expecting the disclosure to come from the government, the Congress, and everything, because that's where the focus has been. That it could actually come from left field. It could come from another country. It could come from the phenomena itself. But it could come from a really good UFO researcher who just so happens to find that you know, that breaking story, that smoking gun bit of evidence and bring it forward in the correct way. Because if done right, it can completely give us what we're all craving so much and that's disclosure. So yeah, I have faith in the community. That's amazing. It, it, I, I really, and, and like I said, I, I really um, am starting to believe that, um, I mean, I, it, it's still, it could go one way or the other for me. Um, I, but I, I, I think, uh, I still think the more likely scenario is some sort of government, um, you know, start small, uh, you know, just dis discover, uh, life yeah. on another planet super far away, right? Super far. And then slowly it'll get closer, right? It'll go from microbial life to, oh, we might have found signs of, a like an advanced civilization and next thing you know you know all of a sudden we're you know disclosure uh is a little bit more closer to home right because then yeah. uh they they start revealing uh well yeah they're actually you know they've been here longer than us and um the, i guess one the, i think i said this three times but the one last thing um something came across in my interview with Richard Doty. Could all the secrecy be that they had a hand, we talk about this missing link, right? Um, in the cosmic scale, the human, the current human brain, like basically doubled uh, overnight on the cosmic scale. Um, do you think there could be secrecy involved? Because they, the phenomenon, whoever they are, had a hand to play in our creation, and they are our god, if you will. Yeah, absolutely, it, absolutely, that could be the case. kind of a haunting yeah. thing to think about. It is, right? but you know, it, like you said, we we've been searching for this missing link in our evolutionary chain for so long. That could just be the answer, plain and simple. It, I mean, it doesn't affect me. I'll be like, okay, cool. You know, I'm glad. I'm, I'm here makes sense some, right you know you know other people might find it a lot more worrisome or scary that that's what happened but yeah i mean it does it makes sense to me it's a potential and that but you know because like we you know we talk about the anunnaki and you know uh 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 this advanced race that you know basically created us to be slaves in, in a, in a uh, you know, to, to mine gold to help fit, you know, fix their atmosphere. And, sure. um, you know, it kind of makes sense in a way. Cause like it's human beings can't stop, um, 
it's like we can't, we're never satisfied. We just want to keep creating more and more and more and more. It's like we can't stop. Even though if we did stop at like the iPhone 15 and the camera I'm using, we'd be fine. We, yeah. I mean, we'd be fine, right? That's true. But we just want to <laughs> create and create and create and create. And it like kind of makes sense that, and we have this fascination with returning to the stars. Um, and it just like, it, it just makes me wonder, like if, if Diana is on to something, that there is this connection between um, our religions and the phenomena that were, as the name just changed, you know, Jacques Vallée has talked about this as well. Sure. Well, this is it. Yeah, I think we're seeing a resurgence of a lot of work that's probably been looked into in the past and we're seeing it in a new lens because of the current climate of uh, how advanced we are te technologically in, in 2024 compared to 30 years ago. You know, I think these things, the research will change as as the world around us changes and the the, the technology that, that we have in our hands these days that, you know, this the power in this 50 years ago would have been the size of a, a warehouse you know and things like that literally so, <laughs> yeah and that's the thing so the way that things change based on the, the current climate of technology and that i find it all fascinating and how it links uh, and so yeah that's why i'll always just keep having these kind of conversations just to just to have them you know it, whether i understand right. a lot of what i'm told is is a different story it's just fun have you <laughs> have you had uh jacques jacques on? I've not had him on the show. No, there've no? been a couple of occasions where we were kind of back and forth trying to line it up, but then I was in Colombia and, and he was out of the country and, you know, uh, it never happened, but I was lucky enough, obviously to meet with Jack in Paris at the end of last year when I was, uh, introducing him at a conference. And, uh, so yeah. Well, I mean, like I said, it seems like that guy's going to be around forever. So uh, yeah. I always find it fascinating that he has um, a connection to the creation of the internet. And the second most popular thing that was searched aside from porn was UFOs. And it's like, like these weird synchronicities, right? So um, <laughs> talk to us about your conference, when it is, how people can get tickets. Um, again, maybe go through the guest lineup without, you know, just who's going to be there um, and how it's going to be laid out um, and give us all the details because uh, I know I'll be there and um, I know my buddy Dan will be there and obviously you'll be there and uh, there'll yes. be a lot of, a lot of, a lot of great, great stuff going on. Yeah, so it's the Anomalous Research and Exploration Forum, or RF for short. It is on April 27 and 28. Uh, we have uh, presentations throughout the day with uh, like open sessions where everyone can just sort of mingle, ask questions, and have conversations. So we're going to have Avi Lowe, Beatrice Villarreal, Danny Sheehan, Carl the Crusher, Chris Sharp. Graham Rendell's going to be doing a fantastic uh, presentation on, on his uh, sort of historical research as well. Um, there's going to be a big 90 minute closeout open session at the end of the weekend where myself and a few other podcasters are going to kind of be there as guests to to kind of mingle and, and just have a really good time. Uh, if you follow me on any social medias, you can find the link. There is an early bird $5 off code available at the moment uh, as well. Um, it's just a, a I've been involved with these events before as a, as an attendee. They are so much fun. They really allow people to just kind of come together. Uh, and it's always a positive experience as well. So I'm just trying to bring that to the community. And I hope to see people there. And this is kind of like a a test run with this new um, this this new uh, platform, right? Um, because well, it's it... it's through it's it's not new. I mean, Richard Dolan's upgrade the debate series. They've done quite a few events before. They did one last year with Richard Dolan, Steve Bassett, and Chris Leto, and you know I was involved with that one, and it was such a, a wonderful event that you know I was like I really want to do something similar to that on a similar platform, and you know here we are doing it under Richard's platform. Uh, they're just really well run. The team behind it are such professionals they they really know what they're doing and i'm I'm really honored that they've agreed well, to that's work awesome. with me on on this yeah so that that's 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 really awesome man and uh I'm so happy I can't wait to I can't wait to see um um I, well, I can't wait to see the whole thing and um like Thank I you. said send me all send me all the links and let me create a marker 
115, 36. Send me all the links so I can include them in the description um, of the podcast and the um, the video. Yeah, will do, man. All right. But Vinny, uh, it was so